what are, what about you dp in your uh your books obviously like you have a lot of anime you could draw upon as inspiration a lot of japanese media sword fighting yes, thing, yes. a lot of kind of post-apocalyptic kind of ideas going in there as well how, how how do you pick and choose the ideas you want to draw upon when you make a story like that well specifically for g i was inspired by kurosawa films so that that was the main um vision i guess you could say or the concept behind the story uh as far as creating that sort of thing it takes a lot of research Uh-oh. takes a lot of research yes it's, it's like whenever i write I spend, stuff, I, I like to add nods but i don't want the nod to be too obvious well some of it is trying to be accurate to the setting so i had to do a lot of really odd author researching like i would watch uh tokyo tour videos that people would put up so i watched probably six hours worth of random people taking video and talking about their trips in tokyo and the different sections of it <clears throat> in order way, to get it feels yeah yeah and and i paid more attention to everyone else like all the people that were milling about because i wanted to get a sense of how the world worked over there because i've never actually been there myself and then for two years daniel i can be an expert for you if you need nice and um that was where i got the idea for um mentioning the traffic lights it was just one of those small details i was like this is something that western readers would probably go huh i didn't know that but it's also relevant to their society because it's part of their traffic laws so it's like a minor detail that just ended up being a good moment um otherwise i i watched 10 hours of various styles of katana use bushido you know what you would call kenjutsu yaido um, all draw the, all the katas um, so. yeah all of those things and like the different schools they're in in order to accurately portray the fights because being kurosawa inspired the sword fighting is a dialogue between the two people in combat so in order to express gabriel correctly i had to know what the hell i was doing and that's why good in the first one and in the second one there's reference to the names and the descriptions of the stances because they're all very relevant to how you respond in combat and in order to show that gabriel is highly trained i had to mentally train in these things so that i could express them on paper well i'd say that's pretty important for uh fight scenes in general is that like it's it's part of the storytelling that's what a lot of people kind of forget they forget to add that the fight scene isn't just supposed to be explosions and stuff like that. It's supposed to add and wild yeah. swings. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He, he uh, uses I mean, a little nano bit of that. enhanced strength to swing that. wildly. Can I add? Can I add off the back of uh, Western Week that uh, the Western gunfights are like I can see why Shanghai Noon decided to mix kung fu. I mean, if they would have if they would have mixed samurai Ronin with Western that would have been probably the best thing like a ronin samurai is the imperial guard like but jackie chan knows kung fu so it's like okay i get it and he um, didn't he did not know english when they filmed that film movie as well which is lit lit that's sick yeah well uh, he's always struggled with english the gunfights though that it it has the storytelling just like the sword fights that's what i was saying Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah, people take their positions they take their stance they exchange dialogue and then they set off it's great how hard is it to you do all these hours of research and you have the fight scene in your head and then be like, okay, I watched this with my eyes. And now how in the heck do I communicate this on the page in a way that comes across clearly to the reader? And I think your books do a really good job of that. Whenever I was reading it, thank you. Um, I didn't stumble really anywhere. I was like, okay, I, I think I kind of get what exactly what's going on, even though I'm not as familiar with all the, the lingo and such but how what's the is that process is it a lot of like you write it you give it to somebody and they're like what's happening or is it what's that like 
it required a lot of daydreaming. Uh, my process for it was you know, watching those videos and getting as familiar with how the person moves, the weapon moves in response to the opponent's move and <laughs> so on and so forth. And then I spent a lot of time just sitting there daydreaming about it, you know, just running through it almost like, uh, practicing choreography for film but it, it was in my head the characters were just going over the moves constantly back and forth in my brain all day long and i would go okay no that doesn't work so if he comes from this stance okay that works better and then i'd adjust that's you know? kind of funny you, i'm picturing this battle and it's all heated and you're like you walk in like guys 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 hold bro, on. yeah I have one. <laughs> question, question let's to you, go me. back to your marks let's try it again but this time can you do a spin right. instead of a I, I do the same thing right. Emily. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah i, I picture all, the whole thing in my head it's great do you make cringy sound effects to yourself a little bit when you when you imagine it because that's what i do <laughs> i i see your i see your sword is as big as mine <laughs> So is it my uh, my poor daughter <laughs> is subject to my insanity on an almost twenty four seven basis, which is where which is where I'll wander through the living room to the kitchen to get a snack, and I make noises and my head moves in various directions because I'm That's purely awesome. focused on what's going on in here, and she's like, "Are you planning a story?" and I'm, and I go, "Oh yeah," and she's okay. Yeah. Yeah, and then I'll start telling her about it while I'm making my snack, and she just, you know, dutifully endures. <laughs> yeah, I mean, awesome. besides the fact that I am retarded, I do twitch like a retard, just like you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> well, like that was that was me playing games as a kid. I'd always I'd always do the sound effects, and one day my 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 brother looked over. You know, the game makes fucking noise, right? I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, I know you're right. <laughs> well, I mean, well, funny. Oh, God, sorry. All my life, I've always had the unfortunate daydream freeze, which is if I get deeply inside my imagination, I just stop and don't move. Oh. And it's very unnerving to other people around me. The folks at the barbecue may see it at some <laughs> point, but I will stare off into space and just, you know, mentally leave the situation. I don't know if that's worse than what I do. I do it when I'm at work. I do construction, but I've done it my entire life, so it's pretty second nature most of the time. And so I just, I mean, I'm picturing things the entire day I'm working. That's that's how my d average day is going. <laughs> yeah. You want to play the? <coughs> Sorry, you want to play the promo video? Yes, oh, enjoy. Enjoy. Oh, I haven't. Seen that music that sounds familiar. Out. Yeah. It should. I do love how angry, like, oh, what was that Holy Eight member's name again? I can't remember it. Not him, the next one, but some of the fighters are so emotional and he's just so he's just so chill about everything. It's gonna be so good. That's I'm awesome. The first, the yeah. first one was a shorter than I anticipated, so I'm curious where the second issue is gonna lead, up, like end off on. I'm kind of curious. Yeah, the first. Act well, the second the issue act. is that it, almost the same as we were talking about backstage. It's finally getting into more of the lore, and especially because this is the introduction of Michael to the story, the second Archangel of the Suzaku Shin Holy Eight. As you saw as the uh, thumbnail for the video, that's the roster of all the Holy Eight killers that Gabriel will be confronting throughout the course of the story. I do love how different they all are, both visually and on the page as well. They're, it makes it it makes it feel like a boss fight every time one shows up. That was what I was going for. Except there's there is one thing though. It feels like 
Gabriel's the boss fight that they're encountering. And yes. The, yeah. <laughs> yep. And once you, if you get through book two, you'll understand why there's a lot more information and it's finally understand what it is that made uh, Gabriel capable of doing this in the first place and the unfortunate consequences therein. Oh no. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm already putting some pieces together, but it's still, I'm like, this almost feels unfair. Like to have such a based individual be this well-trained. <laughs> well, that's the thing. He's not really a based individual at first. He's growing into it. Based. Originally, Thanks. his whole concept was attack dog. His purpose was to kill on command and then go home and wait for the next kill order. That's it. That was his whole life. Well, I think it's a great, it's some great character work because he has kind of the two sides. He has the very visual, like kind of public way people see him. And he's, he's maybe the most robotic amongst the Holy Eight. Correct. But he's, but he also has a deep seated care as well, which leads to the whole confrontation within the, you know, main part, main storyline of the first book. Yep. And the idea, the reason I set up issue number one the way I did was. Gabriel fighting Curio was to show what he has been like up until the point where he meets Hannah. And then throughout the rest of the story, you see a, um, a growth of personality, who he really is deep down underneath all of the training, indoctrination, almost uh, hypnotizing that Genbu, the master of the Holy Eight, put him through in his childhood. Underneath all of that, he really has the heart of a true samurai of the old world, where duty is metered by moral consciousness. Mm -hmm. He knows what's right, and now he knows that he can act in a righteous fashion. Well, that, that's, a, that's a thing, too. I was worried when I first started reading the story I hear about the Holy Eight. I'm like, I was worried that these guys were kind of going to all feel like agent 47 a little bit like just faceless it like it like he, he, he almost interchange no no they're not, not at all yeah. not even close to interchange yeah that's one thing that a <laughs> each lot of, of them the has their guys. own very unique personality yes a lot of the the bad guys you you feel for them you know you like you see the situation it's like man this sort of sucks and um with gabriel i think the dynamic especially in the second book between him and hana is it it's hana right not hannah Hana? It's yeah. technically Hana, but I call her okay. Hannah because it's easier. It, gotcha. The full, the you. full name is Kawarita Hana, which I, is I, I, the broken flower. But I, I just call her Hannah. Every time you're on these streams, I'm like, how do you pronounce this word in this book? <laughs> and it's like not that important. Oh, uh, I walked uh, into uh, doing would know this whole thing about. expecting <laughs> to have to explain <laughs> how things sound. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Between a uh, Gabriel and uh, Hana, I think there's an interesting <laughs> got... dynamic with the way they're changing as people with a little bit more um, room to breathe compared to some of the stuff uh, from the mm -hmm. first book. And that back and forth yes. and seeing how they change is pretty interesting. So, I, I especially no, I love that line where Hannah looks over at Gabriel and says, Muchas gracias, Gabriel. <laughs> it's my favorite yeah. line the whole thing i want to talk more about it but at the same time i don't want to spoil it for people i know that that's my thing too. Read yeah them, you know it's like you don't want to deep dive into it but you want to give a little bit there but um <laughs> i really enjoyed both of them they're they're fast paced the action if you like action it's great and just the characters in the story it was it was a well, lot it, it... different than i'd expected which i'm finding is the case with a lot of books i'm reading i go into it and you know, you see the people on stream and you learn a little bit about the personality and you have a sense of an idea of what they're writing, but you don't really know until you dive into it. And oftentimes the stories are, they have been very different than my expectations. And in this case, a very, in a good way, not that my expectations were low, but they surpassed. Kind I thought of it was just going to be straight garbage, bro. And it was, <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was going to be what you, what I expected. And I think Kahuna, you were saying the same thing you had, you're like, oh, okay, are they doing this? And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, it's not just that there's way more depth and flavor to this than what I had assumed would have been the case. Well, it's the story, the story knows what it is and it just focuses on doing that very well. Too many, mm -hmm. too many books I've seen, especially from like kind of beginning authors or uh, comic books, especially are worse for this. 
they're trying to do everything and therefore accomplish very little sub substant of uh, substantive kind of core story there. Yeah, that's what I learned because G S I and G S I two are my uh fourth and sixth written and published novels that I've ever done. So I, I learned a I lot from yeah. doing my little unsung fantasy trilogy and then applied all of that to tightening the script for G S I one. Then I wrote Legacy of Heroes and came back to do G S I two and after Legacy of Heroes I had a better understanding of um the interpersonal dialogue between characters and how to not get lost in the weeds. And I applied that to doing G I two because it needed more uh lore meat, you know, for people to really yeah. sink their teeth into after the first one being such a tight narrative. Well that, that's what that's what the second book is for. The war the 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 stakes have to get at least maintained and gain a bit more momentum. You have to expand the world a little bit. Uh, show character growth. It's that, that's why book two is often one of my favorites. If it's a, say a trilogy, for example. Yeah, when you do finish it, Kahuna, let me know. We need to have a talk about the final fight scene because I think you're gonna have a lot to say about that. I'm I'm curious too. It's gonna be fun, man. Always. But good yeah, news no, like I, I, haven't, I haven't even seen like I haven't even picked up your uh, legacy of hero stuff, which is weird because I like superhero stuff. Yeah. But yeah, no, I'm, I get, I'm curious I get the most all. interesting reviews about Legacy of Heroes. I was telling them about Royce. Uh, one reviewer wrote that they absolutely loved the characters and thought they were incredibly intricate and their interpersonal struggles were fascinating. But the book overall wasn't great because it was a typical superhero story. <laughs> I, I like, okay. Yeah, did, what? what? <laughs> this yeah, that, was incredible. That. I didn't really. And I was like, I was like, she, she, the point started going this way, and she went, eh, and just slightly missed it. This steak was unbelievable, but the plate they served it on, yeah, that's uh -huh. kind of gay. The piece of parsley was just, it was a little bit too small. There weren't enough, uh, leaves. There, wa there wasn't enough <laughs> green shit in my butter. I'm, yeah. I'm, not, I'm done. I'm out. Well, yeah. in terms of like, if people are new to you, if, if you don't know Dan, you know, Daniel P. Riley, I'm sure most of our audience does, but if you don't, where do you want people to jump in with your, your body of work? Do you want them to start with Jisa Die? Do you want them to start with Tales of Halcyon or do you want them to do Legacy Heroes, just whatever interests them? Yeah. Or, yeah. What, I wouldn't what, to what do part whatever of the body them. should they touch? <laughs> whatever you want no. oh, um, <laughs> anyway yeah, yeah exactly I want people to enjoy because I'm not a genre writer I'm a imagination writer I just find what I want to tell a story about and then I put it out there in the world so um, I just want people to grab what they like off the plate you know gotcha so um, with G Sedai, obviously it is a, you know, the first one is a novel. The second one, I don't know if novella, this one is more pages than this one. You can see the thickness difference there between one. Yeah, number, the first one is a novella. The second one is just big enough to be considered a novel by it's, page count. Which is over at like okay, 50 or 60,000 words. You guys can see like the way mm -hmm. the pages are spaced out. It's not packed, you know, margin to margin, margin with size two font or what have you. It is a quick read yeah. being a thicker book. Um, in terms of these books, though, how many books do you have planned versus how many comics are you planning? <laughs> this is going to blow your mind. Uh, okay. So, <laughs> Lisa and I, yes, the G I story in its entirety is made up of three book arcs. There are six arcs. So there will be 18, 18. 18 novella or just yep. <laughs> small novels to read before the story comes to its complete conclusion. And the comics, there will be six comics per book. Oh, wow. Okay. So that was more they had the heart of yeah, what I got a lot of work for you. Huh? Mm -hmm. that, wow. That's, that's, okay. At the end a lot of, of ambition, man, it's great. It's six at the end of each six, the uh, six comic arc, I will be compiling them all into a full graphic omnibus to sell nice. as well. So, so it's probably with just 93. That's that's book one, huh? Um sorry? 
after the third uh, comic, that's like book one is done in the comics. And no, they're six. six. Number six oh. will be the final uh, final part of the comic. So the goal with comics is 108 total, if I did the math right on that? Yes, indeed. That's awesome, man. That's, that's that would be sick, dude. That that I mean that'll last. You're doing this till oh, you die. As <laughs> long as yeah, as long as you guys and everybody out there likes it enough to keep supporting it, so that I can not have to shell out my unfortunate hard-earned personal funds to keep the comic going, it'll keep going. And but that's... if interest tapers off by the end of issue number six, and I'm not making my funding goals. I'll just stop there and work on something else. You know, I'm not afraid of pivoting, but I want to at least finish the run. And speaking of which, in terms of funding with the first book, you got uh, funding from a, a source. Somebody mm. caught attention of your project and liked it enough to back it. And what whoa, was whoa, don't there? mention him. Don't mention him. Oh. <laughs> no, no, I, I've, heard, I've heard he's evil and he doesn't support the other of these. Yeah. Let's go crazy back here, man. Come on. <laughs> I was going to yeah, say, it, uh, in, in order to adapt my 150,000-word uh, novel, I, I just did the math. Uh, it would be like over a 1,000 pages of, wow. uh, of sequential art, uh, just based on like what I know about what I'm doing with my own campaign and, and stuff after that whole process. So it's serious stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, I like the idea of just having a comic just for advertising purposes, you know, like well, it, it's so much. It's more not consumable. so much for. Yeah, it's not so much for advertising purposes per se. It's because I wanted to get as many people interested in the story itself. So I'm yeah. offering it in different media forms. Mm -hmm. um, what I mean, yeah. yeah, but but it's not really like a marketing strategy of mine. It's just, Hey, right, I right. think, I think comic book fans and manga fans will enjoy the story. And, you know, if I'm lucky, someone who loves comics, but doesn't like to read so much might want to go read the books at some point and get into that. So plus there's always the added goal of extra funding from the campaigns going into my G that I coffer for animation pitch videos which is another goal of mine to try to either an animated film or you, series. It was this was series was meant to be animated or yeah, done. yeah. Like That's reading it, I'm like this is a this is a movie. <laughs> like like because I I love I love the I I'd love to go visit Japan at some point too. I, I follow a lot of people mm -hmm. who live there and work there, and I'm like as I, as I was reading the first one for the first time, I was like, I'm there, dude. I've seen enough like stuff. This this feels like. Yeah, this it, I felt transported, man, and not e there are a lot of books out there, but even a lot of good books that don't really do that 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 well. So I was, I was that was maybe the most um, initially impressive thing about it. Well, well, I'll be back in this because I, I backed the first one. I enjoyed it as much awesome. as you said, and I'll I'll be once Same. I remember probably tomorrow. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'm doing what I like about your I'm doing book it right now <laughs> in in duality with my book, right? Because like with people that read my book, it's for people who want to like edge at dawn, but if they're reading your book, they're going to jizz a day. <laughs> He's had that oh joke for God. like a week, dude. <laughs> yeah, you that that joke in, in, huh? <laughs> oh, no. And he never came back. You feel better now that you got that out of your system. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's like, he's I've been waiting like twenty minutes, just like, all right, when's he, the right he's, moment? A, he's a marine. He only has like three, uh, three or four thoughts every week. That was one of them. He's like, I'm holding on to this one. <laughs> now, uh, I, oh. I want to ask with G Sadai, you're obviously very ambitious with that in terms of the scope of the books you want to write, in terms of the comics you want to make, and then eventually the animation. Do you have mm -hmm. similar aspirations for your other IPs? Uh, you know, in 20 them, years yeah. when GC Dice finally wrapped up, you finally get to your 108 and <laughs> your comics, and then you're like, okay, what's next? Will you go back, or are you more interested in... If he does 108 comics, he's going to animation straight, dude. It's going <laughs> to be great. <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, I think we yeah, should... All of them really have... Uh, the potential to go in various media directions. And I plan to, I'm already storyboarding some legacy hero stuff for comics. Mm -hmm. And, um, I write constantly as most of you who follow me on X know, 
um, and watch what? the freelancer on Sundays. So it's it's not just that. Like I have three books in the chamber already, and uh, some of them are various stories, different genres. Like I said, I'm playing with new things. I'm working on a serial series that's a uh, kind of my attempt to bring the Doctor Who fans back into something that actually feels like Doctor Who. Oh, cool. Um, I, I wish I liked Doctor Who, even when it was good. Yeah. I just, yeah. Oh, it was fun, man. It's a good I show. think it's you great. might I'm like to it right, right now. We're great. Yeah, time. yeah I, I think you might like what I'm working on because one of the things that I want to do with it that's a little different is expose the character that the main character of this story to uh exposing the main character i'm pretty sure the the main character in the current doctor who does that right he yeah himself. <laughs> huh? yeah but yeah, i wanted to them expose him. Him themselves thank yeah. you oh, i wanted yeah, to expose sorry. him to um to nerd culture tropes in story format so like video game stories that we all know are different dimensions in this particular tale that this character travels into and has to react to as an outsider to a world that logistically makes no sense. The fish, um, the fish out of water kind of thing. Yeah. Well, like I, I teased a little bit about it on X with a post I put up of a couple of quotes from the things that I've written. One of them was something, um, I said, I think it was, I said it, this world makes absolutely no sense. Vicious undead, perpetual night, horrors beyond your wildest nightmares. And who puts chicken in a wall? <laughs> this is like the Attack on Titan thing. It's like, why, are the, why is there a chicken in the wall? There's, they're all it's all chickens the whole f- it's all chickens <laughs> it always has the been they, they, they pan up you see the broken wall and just look <laughs> well the joke in that wall? one obviously is it's a castlevania inspired world Ooh, so that's good fun. Hmm. nice you just watched a clip from our show sailing the iron seas check it out live every tuesday at 9 30 eastern it's on multiple channels, so follow my Twitter, at Batsauce, to make sure you know where it is to see it live.